Hi and welcome back to another Tech Minds video. So following on from my last video where I discussed the free and open M17 digital codec, and in that video I showed you this device called a DigiRig Mobile. Now essentially this little device is a USB sound card with a USB to UART converter. This allows audio interfacing, cat control, and along with PTT control of just about any ham radio. Now I'll demonstrate some of the use cases in a moment and why you may need something like this. But first, let's take a look at the unit itself. So on one side, we have a USB-C socket for connecting to your computer or whatever controlling device you want to use. On the other end, we have two 3.5 millimeter sockets one for audio in and out, and the other is a serial connection. As I wanted to use this DigiRig Mobile with my Yaesu FTM300, I made sure to order the appropriate cable. What I was surprised at was the quality of these cables. Even the USB to USB-C cable is of extreme great quality. And it's nice to see those noise suppression filters placed along the cable. Now this helps keep out unwanted RF from the cables. The cable which goes between the DigiRig Mobile and the radio itself is also great quality. And again, we find those filters along the cable. Connecting to the radio is extremely easy. Just connect the color coded 3.5 millimeter plugs into the DigiRig, and then the other end of that goes into your radio. Now on the DigiRig's website, you'll notice there's lots of different cables available for many known manufacturers such as ICOM, Yaesu, Kenwood, Anytone, Watson, Lab599, Retivis, Zygu, and many more. So finding a suitable cable for your radio should not be a problem. Just make sure to order the correct one at the time of ordering your DigiRig Mobile. Now, of course, if you wanted to, you could make your own cables, as long as you know the correct pins and schematic of what's needed. So what can we do with the DigiRig Mobile, and who would need one? Well, with many modern day HF radios, they already include USB support for audio in and out, plus cat control via a virtual serial port. But for those radios which don't, which there are quite a lot, especially mobile radios and handhelds, there's the DigiRig Mobile. As well as a variety of radios, DigiRig also works with a whole host of software applications, whether it's on Linux, Windows, or Mac OS. Applications such as VARA, which has been dubbed the FD8 killer, and of course FT8 and many modes which WSJTX supports. SSTV, whether it's over HF on SSB or even VHF on UHF on FM. 3DV, a digital decoder and encode application for digital voice, can also be used through the DigiRig Mobile. M17 is also supported, which we'll look at more closely in a moment and this is alongside packet radio and APRS. Now, have you ever wanted to try out packet radio but didn't want the expense or the hassle of finding a TNC? Well, with a DigiRig Mobile, you can just use your computer with some emulation software. Now, I'll show you this in a little bit more detail shortly, and just to let you know, it works really well. Now, literally any digital mode application where you can configure its audio in and out routing would be compatible with the DigiRig Mobile. And because of its size and simplicity of connecting between your radio and your computer, the DigiRig Mobile would be suitable for both home and portable use, in my opinion. So let's take a look to see how we'd use this on packet radio or even APRS, which is essentially the same thing, but a specific mode. With the DigiRig Mobile plugged into your computer and radio, you should see these two audio input and outputs within Device Manager, obviously if you're using Windows. Under COM ports, you should also see a new virtual COM port. In my case here, it's COM port 2. The first application that we need to use for packet radio is Sound Modem. Now this application emulates a TNC, sending packet audio out to the DigiRig and then back in from the DigiRig to the computer. Within settings, choose the DigiRig for input and output under sound card devices. To control the radio's PTT, select the COM port under the PTT port settings, then just click on OK. Now, if your radio is set to a frequency which is receiving packet data, then the decoded data will start to show on the sound modem screen. 
Okay, so now we have the modem working, we now need a way of sending and receiving data. For this, we'll use an application called EasyTerm. Now within settings, we just need to enter our call sign. If you did not change any of the port numbers in sound modem, then the TNC setup details you can leave as default. And once you click OK, you're ready to start using it. Now my radio is set to a frequency of 144.950. And I know there is a packet BBS a few miles north from me with a call sign of MB7NMK. Now to connect to the BBS, I click the connect button and enter the BBS call sign into the call to box and then just click connect. Now easy term will then send this command to the sound modem, which will then translate this to packet data and transmit it out via the connected radio via the DigiRig mobile. Now once the response is received, you'll see a connected status on easy term. Now packet BBSs use text-based commands, so to check for messages or bulletins, enter a chat room or even send a message to another user. Now this will all depend on what services that have been set up on that connected BBS. Another packet-based application you can use, which will set up your station as an iGate for APRS, is by using the free utility called APBK Gate. Now this connects to your radio the same as before, and then connected to the APRS IS network. Now sending and receiving from RF and the internet, APRS messages normally found around 144.800 MHz, well, at least here in the UK. APRS frequency may be different in your part of the world, so just check first. Another packet-based application called Pinpoint, which also works with the sound modem application, also acts as a form of iGate sending and receiving APRS from RF to the internet. However, with Pinpoint, you get to see the data which is being received. Any station which is beacon in their position will show them on a map, making it easy to see how far away your packet station is receiving. Now, another useful application which I featured in my last video about M17 is M17 RTX GUI, which is part of M17 Tools. Now this application allows you to choose the audio in and out from your radio and then an audio in and out from your computer. Essentially what this application is doing, it allows you to transmit and receive the M17 digital mode using your radio via RF. And then you're just using your computer's microphone and speakers to talk and listen through. Now this is a great way to start transmitting on a digital mode using a non-digital radio. You only need to ensure that your radio supports a 9600 rear port, which provides the bandwidth needed for the M17 modulation type. Of course, other applications like WSJTX and VARA, or even Ham Radio Deluxe, can all be used with a DigiRig mobile. And when combining that with an HF transceiver, you've got digital comms around the world. Anyway, guys, hope you enjoyed the video. I'll leave some links down below if you want to check out this product in more detail. Until the next video, stay safe, thanks for watching, and see you in the next one.